In this video, we're going to look at how we can start a single phase motor using a resistive starting as opposed to a capacitive start. And we'll begin by reviewing the capacitive start. So with a single phase motor, we have a single phase supply going to a run winding. And as the current goes through this winding, on the positive half cycle, let's assume we get a north pole here and a south pole there. And then on the negative half cycle, down here, we'll get the north pole down here and the south pole up here. So the, the rotor within the, the motor, it wants to follow that, that north pole. And when the north pole changes from here down to here, you know, which, which way does the rotor rotate? You know, does it go anti-clockwise or does it go clockwise? It, and it, it doesn't know. And you can, you could actually take your finger, stick it in, and you could push it in the direction that you want the rotor to rotate. And it would, and it would rotate in that direction. However, there is a more sophisticated way, a sophisticated way of doing it. And that's to use a, a starter winding that has a capacitor in it. So when we add the start winding and the capacitor, the values are chosen. So there's current flowing in this leg of the, or this branch, I should say, of the motor is 90 degrees out from the current in this branch. And the effect of that is that it gives me a, a second electromagnet 90 degrees uh, removed. And when we add these magnetic fields together you know we're going to get something in between so there's our rotor but when we add the magnetic fields together we get something in between so the rotor now says oh there's the north pole i want to move it in that direction and it turns to the right okay so we have controlled the direction which we want the rotor to uh, to rotate so it's like giving a little nudge, right? And then it'll continue to rotate in this direction. Okay, so when we look at this capacitor start system, you know, really the start winding is an inductor and a resistor in series with it because the winding will have some resistance. And similarly, the run winding will have an inductor and a resistor in series. So it'd be something like that. Now, the question I was asked was, how can this start without a starting capacitor? And an application was given where there was um, a positive temperature coefficient relay. Okay, so we might have this motor could be driving a pump, and that pump could be pumping refrigerant around the system. And when it gets to a particular temperature, you know, we want the winding uh, or the motor to, to kick in and, and start pumping the refrigerant. Okay, so in the the PTC relay close, we get an equivalent circuit, something like that. So I've put some values on the inductor and the resistance. And the whole key to this is, is that the values are different. Uh, you may have a different inductance value, but you will have a difference uh, in resistance. So I've just selected these values at random and we'll work through how, how you can give the motor that little nudge. Okay, so if we get the inductive reactance, it's 2 pi FL, 2 by pi by 50 hertz by 500 millihenries, that gives me inductive reactance of 157 ohms. And then if I want to get the impedance of this run branch, it's R squared plus XL squared, we get the square root of that, and that works out to be 159 ohms. Similarly, I do it with the start winding, but we're going to use uh, 250 millihenries here and 50 ohms. And that gives me a total impedance of 93 ohms. All right, if I want to get the phase angle then between the voltage and the current, well, the phase angle phi, so cosine phi is equal to r over z. So when I do it for the run branch, um, it is 25 over 159, and that works out to be uh, 81 degrees. 
Similarly, when I do it in the start branch, I get 57 degrees. Okay, so before we draw these on a phase diagram, well, let's work out what the current is. So the current in the run is V over Z1, which is 240 volts divided by 159 ohms, and that gives me 1.5 amps. And on the start winding, it is 240 volts over 93 ohms, and that gives me 2.6 amps. Okay, so we draw these on the, the phase diagram. So with a parallel circuit, the voltage common to both, and with an inductive circuit, the current lags the voltage. So I2 there is at 57 degrees, and I1 is at 81 degrees. So we have a phase difference. Okay, so that means that our current going through here is going to be a different phase to the current through here and the current and the electromagnetic field you know they, they'll be you know um, proportional to each other and that will have the effect of kicking the electromagnetic field just slightly in this case to the right okay so i'm showing it going slightly to the right so now the magnet inside the rotor will now align with it so we've given it that little nudge and then it can start following the rotating magnetic field okay so that's how a resistive start works you know you're just varying the current in in one branch it gives a phase angle uh, in in difference in current to the to the two windings and that just kicks it off slightly slightly to the right or to the left depending on which way it's it's wired and that's how it gets to, to start.